Welcome back, everybody. It's Jack Graham along with John Peterson for another issue chapter of We Talk Photo, which is a podcast about everything. Well, I shouldn't say that because it kind of sometimes degenerates into some other things, but it's predominantly about photography. Should be. Now, for those of you who are watching us, um, that's John uh, on the left hand side. It says John P. And that's uh, me on the right hand side. And below us is my dear friend, the great Tony Sweet. Um, great Tony you. Sweet. You. You're very kind. Someday we got to do a podcast of uh, musician jokes, you know. We could entertain that, people. That could happen. It would that be like happen. people are beauty. I said, I said Tony, you're beauty. I watched that video, man. He, he was so great. So great. great. But anyway, yeah, Tony, thank you for being here. Um, you know, Pleasure. a lot of uh, people who... I run into in my workshops and, and things that I do with John and and where else they all say, man, I says I I'm doing a workshop with Tony Sweet or I did a workshop with Tony Sweet, and, I, and I'm not saying this because he's here. I have never heard one negative comment right. in my 110 years of leading photo workshops about uh, Tony and Tony's uh, events. So Tony, thanks for taking some time to be here. Um, we we well, took a few minutes yeah. before we we got on talking here, saying what are we going to do? And you know, Tony, Tony is a um, is a is a is a accomplished uh, drummer, um, and and you know those those of you who know me know my musical background. Um, even John Peterson, though he he's he, he doesn't play an instrument, is very musically oriented. Probably has better hi fi gear than anybody that I know for sure. And listens to good music, and knows who who all the good players are. So we were talking about stuff, and um, you know, said, so, "Well, what do we want to talk about with Tony?" Because you know, um, we we like to be prepared, believe it or not. But we're just going to talk about what Tony's doing these days, because Tony does some things that um, are, you know, um, for 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 all your uh interests are different than kind of i think what a lot of the ph photography leaders and photographers and teachers these days are doing like um tony i know everybody probably knows who you are but just could you just go through a few minutes of you know this is your life if you, if you wouldn't mind <laughs> well jack i'm kind of a late starter i began um Photography at age 44, which is kind of old to start, in this, start any business, you know. But I tend to learn fast, start late and learn fast, you know. And um, pretty much went through the the nature thing and the landscape thing. And then things got more more personal after a certain point where I wanted to be more expressive. Like like in my jazz playing, I, I want to be more, like we all do, more expressive, more personal in our work, you know. And I found that I had an affinity for infrared at a very young age, like 10 I saw a shot. I was like, "Man, what is that?" You know, and then I I studied it and learned that it was infrared, color infrared, back in the '60s. But so that was amazing. Never forgot it to this day. It's a great shot of palm trees, red palm trees, and a ten-year-old. It's nuts, you know. So I, I I never lost my um excitement about infrared. So I've been doing that for a while, twenty years now, and just got into it pretty heavily with um some some color. It, it, it's getting popular now so there's more more avenues for expression with the color filters and different nanometers uh rather than just black and white there's, there's more color options now they're more expressive which is kind of fun just starting to hit on that a little bit yeah but you know a lot of people i don't you know i'm not an infrared photographer at all when, when someday i'm going to learn it it's not something you just pick up and say oh, i'm going to be an infrared photographer today it, it's quite a learning process and you teach that and, yeah, and, well, it, 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 it's kind of a different way of seeing. I mean, images that you would never think twice about in color, you actually look for in infrared. It's kind of an interesting uh, it, uh, it, flip. What is you it know. you look for, Tony? Because I've been fascinated by infrared as well. I mean, how do you how do you adjust your vision to see sort of in infrared to find good compositions? Oh boy, um, is are you looking for tonal shifts or are you looking for patterns, textures? Oh, it's um, all about it, it's. It's still all about light, man. It's all about light, light conditions, that kind of thing. You know, um, for example, 
one of my favorite times to photograph is, is, is uh, during the rain, light rain, you know, fog, things like that, because the uh, the moisture turns the uh, the leaves bright white, like a bride, like a bride and groom. The whites are real white, the blacks are jet black. He had a great contrast, you know, which I like a lot in everything, but it really speaks uh, in infrared quite a lot. So conditions are important. Early morning, misty mornings are great because they're wet, and wet conditions are great for IR. Do you like, do you, is, does high contrast work better or lower contrast or both? I find my least favorite condition is, is very high contrast. Okay. I, mean, I like harsh shadows, harsh shadow shots, you know, but, but in general, the, the, the most uh, 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 options are available to you in bright overcast, you know, the same time as color, morning, evening, marginal light, same conditions. Yeah, it's fascinating. It can kind of make it it's otherworldly almost in a way. You can create alien landscapes with it. Yeah, that's the that's the word that the people use for that, the otherworldly, that adjective, you know, it's pretty um expressive because it is. And in the right conditions, it looks truly otherworldly. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, I, th cool. I think, you know, any way that we can as artists that we can shift the way we see the world around us. I think it's fantastic because even just in our day-to-day -day lives, we, by, by growing in and enhancing our own vision, I mean, it just enhances our, our lives in such a cool way. Well, what it does, the IR gives you a, a second planet to photograph. Uh, so when you're done with planet one, you go to planet two, you know, and, and do that in infrared, you know, and then color infrared, and then it yeah. just goes on and on. But it, it gets your head out of the, uh, the rut. When you when you go out, do you do you just go out with either color or IR, or do you sort of switch between the two? I go out with both, with uh, no expectations, none. I expect nothing when I go out. I try to clear my skull out, nothing's in there, and just react, just like playing uh playing jazz. You you react to situations. Same thing with this to me. There's no difference to me between this and and improvised music. As far as concept, you know, we, we did a podcast a few podcasts ago with Cole Thompson um, and uh, John John uh, Barclay Barkley, and um, we talked a lot about that. Uh, we got a lot of good reaction from our listeners uh, on that as well, and it's it's really an interesting thing. And you know, even if you're a non musician, um, you may cook. You know, or you may plant your garden or whatever you do, you know. Sometimes planning is just really overblown. It's over overworked. In fact, there's a number of Miles Davis records, a, a good number of them, that he refused to to rehearse. One take. He didn't want he didn't want rehearsal because rehearsal inhibited the creative situation. Well, he, he kind of did that. He he, uh, he would uh, take his band out for one year, one year of gigs. That's kind of rehearsal. Then he yeah. come back and, and and do the album with almost no retakes. You know the uh, the four, the, what's regarded as maybe Miles's four greatest records were made for prestige: smoking, cooking, working, and relaxing, else? relaxing, relaxing. relaxing. Yeah, that's that's it. That's it right he, there. He owed Prestige four records. He was already signed at Columbia, and he went in and recorded those in one in like two days. Sure, you no know, just play them. Sure, no rehearsal. It's great. I, I, I think great. it's very true, and you know, the same same thing holds true in photography. At least for me personally, is that if you plan too much, you lose the 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 reaction to the environment. It, when you show up on location, right? If you have a pre-planned response to, to whatever you find, that's <laughs> less, I think it's less personal than than having a an immediate visceral response to a location and then photographing something to that. That to me is far more personal than a planned event. Well, you can't really plan. A photograph. You can't how, really many, plan how many times do you, you plan some, you plan a barbecue? You know, it rains. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and exactly. when you plan, 
you, you can't. It's never going to be that way. So, but what do you plan? What is it? The sunset? What if the sunset? Then what? I mean, you can't. You can't really plan. You can think you're planning, yeah. mm -hmm. but you're really not. You can think yeah. you're planning. I love yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. You can think Very you're planning. True. But you know, you react to the environment, and uh, no, a lot of times I um, you did an article years ago for Shutterbug, and I may redo it called the uh, the shot on the way to the shot. You know, and I should. Man, I'm going to this spot. But wait a minute. What's this over here? You know, and uh, for years I just drove past that. Now I'm going to this thing. It looks great. Now I'm going to keep driving, you know. But then I thought, and then after, after getting there so many times and saying like nothing that I wanted, yeah, you know, nothing there. And the shot was back there. <clears throat> pretty much changed you know, my uh, my paradigm. You know, if I saw something on the way to the shot, I would stop and just spend time with it you know, rather than driving. Like we all do. That looks great. Let's go. You know, we'll stop and take the picture, you know. And, and, it's probably more times not better than where you're going. That's mm -hmm. my experience. You know? So don't be hooked into, locked into anything. It's completely wide open. Completely wide open. So, so in your, in your photography world, Tony, you do some infrared stuff. You do some, you know, abstract uh, kind of impressionistic work. Um, what, what, this is a silly question, maybe, but what percentage of your, you know, break down your percentage of what you, in the last year, what you've done? Is it mostly infrared? Is it mostly? Um, it was 50-50 until last week. Where I shot 1,200 IR and 600 color. And that's not unusual in an area as rich as the Smokies for infrared photography. It's not unusual. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is an infrared venue, as is Charleston. Yeah. Great in infrared. 12 months. <clears throat> in the Smokies, for example, the roadie leaves are, are green year round. Yep. Winter, year round. So in our winter workshop, we shoot mostly infrared because it's still green, you know. So um, it's just wide open. You know, it's, it's uh, pretty cool. And IR is very expressive. I find it very expressive anyway. I mean, I think that's what you, what people are going to want to know um, gear wise. What are you using infrared? Oh, I've paired way down, man, over the years, over the last two years, actually. I'm down to uh, two cameras and three lenses, basically. So I've got a, um, <clears throat> pardon me, a, uh, of course, a two Nikon Z7-2s, and the one is dedicated, well, full spectrum, not uh, infrared, and the other is straight color, you know. But on the infrared camera, I could put in put in what's called a cut filter, which brings that camera back being a full color, no problem camera. So I've got a backup built into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got my color camera, color backup, IR, no IR backup. But um, it, it's paired down one to 400, uh, 13 to 14 to 35, and 24 to 120 on the infrared, which stays on there. And uh, uh, two of them, actually. The the one on just not to get uh, too much into the weeds here the uh, the twenty four to one twenty is a great range, but in IR it tends to give you a hot spot sometimes with the uh, a mirrorless one, but the old DSLR version does not give you a hot spot. So I've got mm -hmm. that with FTZ on the camera, and but pretty much two cameras with the same kind of lens and a telephoto on wide, so it's a very short pack. Do you, do you so with with IR though? From my limited understanding, are there particular wavelengths that you can set, have your camera calibrated to to only pick up or exclude? Oh, oh, oh absolutely. I mean, IR is not new. It was around World War II. Yeah, that, that's yeah. really old technology. But um, yeah, there's more and more all the time. It was like you know a seven twenty and five ninety and maybe even thirty. And that's like it gives to a thousand, gives down to like you know four sixty. They're increasing. It, it's popular. Does so get more attention, get more development. You know, more things all the time. Yeah, that's but you have to cool. find which ones work for you. Yeah, and most of these sites, the uh, prime sites. Not that I'm pushing anything, but the prime sites, the biggest ones in the country are Calaria Vision, out of Jersey, and 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 uh, Life Pixel, out of Mokotia, Washington. Those are the oldest that I know of and most established IR conversion companies in the country. There might be more. I just know those too. And uh, they're adding more stuff all the time, uh, fixing problems. They're on top of it. Kind of a good time to get into it, actually. I used to say that the two things Muckle Washington's famous for, 
is the ferry to Whidbey and IR. It's about pretty it. much. Yeah. Pretty much, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so are you doing when you do when you do your color work? Um, talk about and a lot of photographers they get a little uh I know I do, you know, so I, it's really hard for me to do that. But people ask me about style. I mean, can you just talk about the, the Tony Sweet style? Because you, you've got a, you definitely have a a style. Well, you know? well, thank you, Jack. But that's that's the irony of style. I don't see my style. I don't even know what that is. I can, yeah. Others see that. I, we don't see our stuff like of that. Course. So to try to you know, to try to uh, 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 say this is my style is kind of ridiculous because yeah. what if you yeah. say my style is something else? Yeah. Then we have an argument, you know. I don't <clears> think <throat> about it. I don't care. But I just shoot, and that's kind of what I do. I don't pigeonhole myself. I don't categorize myself at, at all. I, when that's people ask thing. me, I say Tony is a, a thinker. He's a thinking man's photographer. And, I appreciate that. <laughs> but you'll never know what you you know, you never know what you're going to see. You know. If you, those of you who have been on workshops with Tony, probably have seen that because, you know, there's no planning, there's no anything, and it's, it. We were talking before. It's kind of like it's like it's like kind of playing free jazz. You know, it's it's whatever. Pretty much, man. With happens. Well, with freedom comes responsibility. With freedom comes responsibility. You have to be responsible for what you're doing. The, the more free you are, the more restricted you make yourself. You have to control your own parameters. You know. That's a, a higher state of the art, I think, you know, to control what you do. But um, no, it's fun, man. It's just different. The, 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 uh, it's getting very popular now, the IR thing, you know, and uh, it's advancing. So it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Where are you off to these days? I know you were just out here and I couldn't, I, I, you know, I was gonna, trying to find a way to get over there. But and what, what's funny is I look out my window here, right? Out the window, I'm looking. Yes, at. I look at the mountain, and on the other side of that mountain is Townsend. I mean, on a straight line from me to Townsend is maybe 15 miles. So I tried to get, get some time to go mosey around over there last week, but I just couldn't get out. We're still unpacking boxes. And oh, sure, happened. man, sure, absolutely. But, um, what, where are you? Where are you been? Where are you going? Um. Well, we're around here for a little while. There's some private stuff in Maryland, some IR stuff. Uh, I've got a couple book projects I'm working on that I want to get going. And um, take care of family stuff right now. Yeah, we, we had like a busy spring and a busy fall. And we're around for a couple of months doing local things, more online stuff. You know, that's kind of where I want to go. And uh, ultimately, but uh, you're just around for another month or so. And then some stuff in Longwood and some flower stuff and just uh, keeping busy, you know, IR and color and work on uh, an infrared color flower color IR flower book which is um that is that's a wild thing man you have uh, the different filters and the color options and it's got to look good not natural just good not crazy you know and there's a fine line there you know but it's uh there's too much going on it's just uh all wide open and very exciting to me right now when you go to Longwood what what are you shooting all infrared in Longwood or are you shooting some abstract stuff well there's color infrared so it's not always black and white first of all but uh, there's a they added some really great foliage outside tree lines and, and and just built it up i mean they changed it a lot from when i first started going there about 40 40 years ago of course mm -hmm. but um yeah they beefed up the outside and uh, um yeah they're doing great like all the updates are good you know they yeah they're good for photography nothing's inhibiting anything you know so you just, you just need to uh, 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 outweigh the construction. They're they're building, right, they're constructing right now, so it's not op wide open, but it will be. But it's huge, and, and uh, it's a great place to photo. Mostly flowers, but outside again, a lot of foliage, tree lines, and beautiful IR. You know. Hey Tony, I want to I want to jump back. There there was something you said in your introduction that that just resonated with me and and I don't quite know if there's a question there or not but but when you were describing your uh, evolution as a photographer you had said uh, you know I started out landscape and nature and all that stuff and then I eventually started um, 
becoming more personal and more expressive. Yes. And and it's kind of interesting that that's kind of a, 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 a pattern that I'm finding myself going through as well over the years where, you know, we, we, everybody starts off shooting what we think we should shoot, you know, and the traditional stuff and the stuff that, that outdoor photographer tells us to shoot and everything else tells us to shoot. And then something clicks and, and you start to find your own personal expression, your voice. And, and that's a, that's just a, fantastic place to to transition to you know because people often ask you know how, how do i find my style how do i find my voice well well you know when i hear I, that man i think uh, it'll find you don't worry about it it'll find you yeah <laughs> yeah don't don't worry just, about it. it takes time though i mean and, and it takes shooting lots and lots of shooting so you evolve to a <clears> point <throat> where you start to see your own voice that's correct, but uh, but bear in mind that there's a, a lot of money in selling style workshops. Come yeah. down, learn your style, man. We're gonna work on your style, you know. Yeah, We're gonna do it three days, twenty five words or less, you know. I I had a guy once tell me his New Year's resolution was to find his vision the next well, year. I said, not gonna happen. Good luck, but not gonna not good find you, and it may never find you. And when it does, you'll know it, but. Don't look for it. It's just gonna. I don't not... care about that stuff, man. That that's out of my control. That's what other people think. That's up to them. Yeah. That's when I get better at what I do, and that's kind of where I am right now. That's when yeah. I get better. It's all about yeah. making yourself happy. Just getting better at what I do. I mean, I do this for a real. I want to get good at it. So that's kind of what I'm working on. Whatever. My, my favorite trumpet player. I should say that one of my three top favorite trumpet players of all time is a guy by the name of Jack Sheldon. Jack, <laughs> L.A. He's yeah. a great. Yeah. And he did everything. He he was the he, he did the soundtrack to uh, um, uh, "Shower Your Smile" of Sandpiper. He's the sure. trumpet Sure, he was a heavy jazz guy in L.A. He did everything. You name it. He he did. He was uh, he was the voice in uh, in um, uh, "If I Were a Bill." What was that cartoon? Um, I don't know. Um, uh, Schoolhouse Rock. Yeah, I mean, so he, I mean, yeah. he did, he was the Ed McMahon of Merv Griffin. I mean, he did it all. So they, they, they did all. a full DVD of him. And at the end, they said, Jack, you know, you've done everything. And he's like 81. He's still taking, he was, when he was 81 or something, he's still taking lessons from Johan Rainey in, in LA. Sure. And, and uh, Chinatown, he's the trumpet player in China, Johan. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> And they said, Jack, what do you want to do? You know, you're 80 years old. He goes, man, he goes, I'm still trying to get good. And yes, I, I, I could not agree more. He's on top of the mountain. And he's still trying to get good. Could not agree more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, that's right, man. You know, I, I think to maintain a, a level of humility is, is critical, first of all, to learning anything. And that's that's good that he did that. I mean, it says a lot about him, a lot. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I like to... You know, I know, I I know, John. You know, the three of us are in that in that vein. But I don't know. You know, um, when you hit a certain age, you just wonder if you're ever going to get to where you want to be. And yeah, it's okay too. You know, you you get. You know, I think when you're younger, you know, you you want to get to a certain point, and you really strive for that. Now, oh, yeah. at my age, I don't even care if I if I. Well, no, I it's it's you know, to me, it's all about when you're younger it's about a desk life is about a destination getting stuff getting to a point exactly. getting this getting that when you get exactly. older i think <laughs> life is about appreciating the journey along the way it's all about experiences right. in the in the journey and right. you know taking a car trip right it's not about getting to the end it's about the journey along the way well it's called a trip <laughs> yeah yeah and it's you know, that's why I'm not I, that wrapped up myself in getting good or getting whatever. I just want to keep learning and, and improving. I don't want to get to a point. I just want to enjoy my trip along the way. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You know, and, and I think that's um, that's kind of where I am. I, I kind of know what I want, what I like most of the time, but I'm always surprised. Always surprised at something, you know, which is great. And um, I just want to get more into, I'm sorry, Jack. No, no, things happen by accident too. Sometimes your best work is totally unplanned. And yeah, you got that right, man. You got yeah, that. Exactly that's the right. truth. And, and very infrequently, when you 
push that shutter down, you go, man, this is going to be a great photograph. You know, you, you just don't know sometimes. And sometimes I may have said that. I may have said that once in my life, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I could tell you, it, it's been once in you know. Yeah, second. not much. Yeah, red clouds are a kirk effect in Iceland. You know, I mean, something like that is like, okay, boom, I got this. You know, but yeah. that doesn't happen that long, that often. You know. For me, it was those horses in Iceland that one day. That oh was, yeah, I, it was. It was. And that's one or two things, man. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, but that's all right. That's all right. So you're be you, you you've got some workshops coming up um, that hope you know. I don't know if you have any openings left on them, but um, you look, let let everybody know what you're doing. Uh, TonySweet.com's got it all. Got to recall offhand. It's all written down there, you know. And uh, then uh, contact Susan, who handles the business end of the entertainment, you know. Susan is a Susan. At, I know, I know. Susan at TonySweet.com. So I have all the information. But in general, there's a few things coming up. I can't recall offhand. I think we're doing a gig in Wisconsin, which is nice up on the uh, uh, Lake Superior. Misa, you know. The, yeah, yeah. Well, good. You, you, is that the one that you're doing with Moats? Are you doing that with Moats? Not with him, but in the same location. Okay. okay. Same same school, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah some yeah, up yeah. there, and then I'm sorry. That's up in Madeline Island, John. That's mm -hmm. the one I do. Yeah, yeah. It's coming up in July, and some stuff out of Chicago coming up in August, I believe. And then it's uh, and and then it's fall. It is. It is. And it's it like Iceland. Uh, that's maybe next year. Okay. I think in the Cuban next year. Just just to try to straighten out the uh, stuff going on down there. It's been uh, yeah. difficult getting down there, hasn't it? They changed some things. It's, it's okay to get down there. But once you're there, the currency is screwed up and uh, some credit cards work. So there's a lot of disorganization, a lot of money issues. They yeah. want you to bring the cash. They want you to bring. Well, bring who doesn't? Who cash. doesn't? I'm, I want that too. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants that, you know. Yeah. They actually won't take US dollars. You have to uh, they, uh, but what they do is. Uh, a dollar down there is worth 87 cents in Cuba. It should be a dollar 87 in Cuba. Yeah. <laughs> That's Castro like sticking it to us, you know. And we still go and give them the money, you know, because we want to go, but I find that pretty offensive actually. 13%. That's, that's a lot of money. A lot of money. Especially 13. in Cuba, for God's sake. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tony, you have to make me one promise. And I, I I'm trying to get my my boats to do the same thing and a couple other people you gotta make me one promise you got it or you retire and i retire that would never we'll never retire let's rephrase that before we uh back off enough that we're not as relevant as we once were right we, that's exactly right <laughs> we need to do something once together i think it'd be a gas what do you, you want know, to do I'm write it down. What do you want to do? We'll figure it out. We'll, well, you're we'll close right now. You're close down there, man. Yeah. So we're in the yeah. same part of the country now. So that shouldn't be a problem. No, no, no. And you know, it, it's uh, it's it, it, it's just there's a handful of people that that um, that not only do I respect as a, as an artist, but just I mean, just fun people to be around. And I mean. Can you imagine, John, Tony, and I trying to teach something? <laughs> imagine us doing <laughs> image reviews in the same room. It'd be yeah. pretty fun, man. It'd be pretty fun. I know it would. Man, yeah. we, maybe, maybe, you know, Tony, when all of this is over, when when we can't carry cameras anymore and, you know, we're drooling and all that, maybe we could, like, just go on the rubber chicken circuit and go to the camera club conventions and tell funny stories about it. <laughs> oh, I get it. The camera club chitlin circuit. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, because we could fill that up. Oh, we could, uh, man. We could. We got them all uh, in and we them all out. It'd be great. You know, in closing, all I could say, you know, to everybody that's listening to this is that just, yeah, I'm not going to get into it. Just go do something with Tony. Take one of Thank his classes. And, and um, you know, there's more to life than learning about infrared and aperture and gear and whatever else we've tried to teach you all over the years, it, it, there's a camaraderie that happens on these workshops. Uh, oh, yeah. One time. It and, is great. Uh, 
and we, we you know we're serious we try to get our point across but you know we're not we're not uh, you know we're not curing incurable diseases here we're, this is photography you know this is not mm -hmm. this is not uh not we're, we're not we're not solving the, the biggest problems in the world and we try to keep it that way and john and i will right, work over the just... same tracks like that when he's by himself and, you know, photography, so, it's self-expression. It's just having a good time outside, which is phenomenal, and yeah. just uh, getting the stuff gratification from doing your work. That's the whole point. That's like one thing that AI will never take away from us, Tony. They'll never take away the fact that we can go to these places and yeah. see what we. Yeah. That's all we have left, Jack. What we have left. That's all we have left, brother. God, well, I want to go out and buy my casket after we're done here. No, don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Costco. You know, Costco is doing a huge casket business, by the way. Wait till the price, wait till the price comes down. Online. It's huge. It really is. I'm not surprised. I got to the sale. There is two drawers at the back of my truck that <laughs> and they're big enough. I can I can just get buried one of them and say that you know it's that white birch, you know, the Baltic birch. It's Perfect, man. Perfect. There you go. All right. John, what do we leave out? I, I talk so much. Poor Josh was sitting there trying to get a word. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. See, it's earlier for me than it is for you guys. So I'm still processing my first cup of coffee. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and you, you got the sun setting back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just got much saying back there. So Jack's right. No, Tony, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on yeah. and making time for us today. Well, it's a pleasure, man. It was great talking to you guys, seeing you again. Yeah, and and now that I'm here in uh, in Seymour, Tennessee, which is, I just, drive past that. I see a sign for that. Yeah, we're right yeah. between, uh, kind of be, you know, right just southeast of Knoxville, and half an hour from the from Thousand, really. So it's we, we'll wow. get you here, and we'll plan some. It'd be fun. Maybe three of us could do some. Who knows? It would be fun, man. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, folks, um, again, if you have any questions, comments, uh, ideas, it's we talk photo at gmail.com. And YouTube, it's we talk photo. Just go to YouTube and type in we talk photo and subscribe and like and do all that stuff. Yeah. Because they have these algorithms that the more you do that, it gets distributed. Propagated more. Yeah, you bet. Propagated. Propagate. That's the big word for the day. That's the big word. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you got all of that, and we, you know, we got some other things coming up. Tony, thank you so much. Good to see you. Um, Always a pleasure, Jack. Thank you. We'll uh, we'll put something on your calendar. It'd be fun. Let's do it, man. Sounds fantastic. All right. All right. Thank, thank you, you folks. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you.